Jesus some glory? I can't bless him. I said, how many of you came to give Jesus some praise? Yeah.
so thankful to be yet in the ninth month of the year, the first Sunday in September of 2020. And what an interesting year it has been for us. And while we are still functioning in somewhat unconventional measures, we understand that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we just thank God for His presence. We thank God for you in your homes, in your living rooms, in your cars. We just thank you for allowing us to participate in a worship experience with you. And as I always say, it's more important for us to be in your spirits, in your hearts, and in your lives. We are Refuge Church of God in Christ, and we bring you greetings from our senior pastor, Superintendent Joseph Titus Williams, First Lady Wendell Williams. I bring you greetings from my wife, Lady Ashley Williams. And we just thank God for the tremendous music ministry that we never take for granted under the leadership of Minister Austin Williams and these phenomenal singers that sound like they are at the very gates of heaven itself, yeah. ushering in the presence of yeah. the living Almighty yeah. God. And it is something that resonates in our spirits and we are indeed grateful today for the presence of the Lord. We're we'll jumping to this word that God has given us today definitely not to be before you too long but we do know that there is a word from the Lord for us today Obadiah I don't even have to give you the chapter because there's only one Obadiah chapter 1 we're going to begin reading at verse number 15 Ooh. Chapter 1, verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. They, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken, and they shall, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields. Of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria and Benjamin, God shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shepherah, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdoms shall be the Lord's. And the word of the Lord is rich, powerful, and last, I thought for today is return to sender. Return to <laughs> sender. Return Father, to, to what you have ushered us into. I'm grateful that you have prepared a word for your people. Prepare now your people to receive your word. And may the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be found acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength, rock, and redeemer. Amen. Prophet Obadiah and his work, the book of Obadiah, exists in somewhat obscurity within the Bible. Structurally, it is the shortest book in the Old Testament, and Obadiah could very well be more known for the prophet on his very own merits. In spite of the book's brevity and the ambiguity of its author, there within it is a powerful message. These observations prove to us that you don't have to have a lot in order to do a lot. You don't have to be popular to be powerful. And even when you are small, you can have great significance. As big as our God is, he has never allowed size to restrict him or to restrict his word. You see, sometimes he speaks in a thundering 
while other times he might use a still, small voice. Sometimes it's as verbose as the Sermon on the Mount, while other times three words release miracles. Three words such as, Lazarus, come forth, and dead men begin to walk. Three words like, I am he, and enemies fall to the ground. Three words like, peace be still, and storms stop raging, because little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. And so while the book of Obadiah is short, it is brief, having only one chapter containing 21 verses, it is power packed. These verses are aimed at delivering a direct message from God through his prophet specifically to Edom. Last week we looked at a piece of the life of Jacob and the transformation that occurred changing him from Jacob, the trickster, into Israel, the nation. In similar fashion, the same is true for his older brother Esau. Esau, the man, became a nation of people known as Edom. Now while in the womb of their mother Rebekah, God spoke a prophetic word to her that she was indeed carrying two nations within her and that the older would serve the younger. If you heard that, I hope that you receive this word because I have an unction to release a word to a few people that the difficulty that you are experiencing or the issues that you have been experiencing are simply because you are about to give birth to some things that are greater than you could have ever imagined. There is something in you and the fight and the stress and the turmoil that you have endured is because God has been supernaturally reproduced positioning you not to just have regular, but he wants to give you twice as much. God is changing, reversing, reordering the natural order of things and what was behind is about to be ushered into the front. Jesus said it better than me. The first shall be the last. The bottom is about to be the top. That which has been laid low is about to be exalted. But it's not because of politics. It's not because of man's plans. It's not because of connections or networking. It's simply because this was the hand and the design of God all along. It was out of order and God God put it in order because he decided that he was going to pull a switch. I think I gave you your first hashtag. It's a switch that's about to happen in my life when I was broke, but God's about to switch some things and make me blessed. I was sick. God's going to switch some things and make me healed. I was crazy. God's going to switch some things and give me peace. You need to hear that in spite of the supernatural reordering, or better yet, because of the supernatural reordering, God came to a place and decided, I'm changing up the way that things should have been in tradition and in history, and that there is going to be something unlike any other where the older is going to serve the younger. In this particular text, we understand that Jacob is the younger brother. But God said, there's something special about him. I've got to release a word that's going to change the order of things. And so while Jacob exists in the peace and favor of God, we have to understand that that caused this family to function, function in dysfunction, that they had a very contentious relationship that developed between Jacob and Esau, and so subsequently two did their descendants. There were issues going down between the generations, and most of us can identify how there are people, there are cliques and clans directly within the family that act a certain way that have always been jealous because uh, some kind of way you was light skinned and they was dark skinned or find a way to bring this unity because uh, your mother could afford Pizza Hut she could only afford Taco Bell I don't know what but for some reason within the families uh, there always seems uh, to be some people that don't like the other and there's no reason when we share the same DNA well just like it is in my family and yours uh, it was with Israel and 
Edom. You see, both of them come from Isaac, the covenantal blessed son of Abraham and Sarah, meaning that both of them are the grandchild of Abraham and Sarah. Both of these nations lived right next door to one another, but there was historic bad blood between the cousins. So, and that is because sometimes the greatest uh, dysfunction in our lives is because uh, of our DNA. The people who are family or considered more than friends uh, can be the ones uh, who secretly may not like you the most and uh, literally are waiting for your day of Calamity. Now, I'm sure most of my audience knows me, knows that I'm not one of these preachers who's going to scare you into paranoia and have you believing that everybody is against you. The truth is, everybody's not against you. You're not that important. But you need, to catch what I'm about to say, you need to have some people that are against you. And if you do, please don't be naive thinking that sometimes these people are not already really close to you. And the point illustrates even better when we look at a basic understanding of the history of Israel. That history will recognize that they were enslaved in Egypt for four hundred years. So do you not know that the entire time that they were slaves in Egypt, uh, their cousins who had also become a mighty nation in and of themselves uh, never made any biblical attempt to, to rescue Israel from their oppressors. Uh, as a matter of fact, after Israel defeated Egypt uh, and was making its way through the wilderness. Uh, the Bible records that they sought to pass through the land of Edom. Uh, Moses sent messengers who politely asked, uh, can we please pass through your land? Uh, as a matter of fact, if we even stop to get a drink of water, uh, we will pay you out of our substance. Uh, Edom responded by telling them, if you come through here, uh, you're going to do so with a fight. Uh, meaning that Israel's very presence presence uh, in the country of their cousins uh, was viewed as a declaration of war. Uh, not only will we not help you get out of the mess you're in, uh, but if you try to pass through here, uh, we're going to give you a fight to send you back uh, to where you came from. Uh, I think I'm preaching to too many of us who can identify uh, that our mere presence, our skin color, our swagger, it senses and incites people toward hatred that can literally result in libel, slander, and attacks on our reputation. And even in the case of a black man and the police, it can result in seven shots to the back well. and even physical death. And if that was not enough in and of itself, when Israel was attacked and conquered by Babylon, do you not know it was their cousins over in Edom who actually plundered their cities? I hope I'm preaching to somebody to understand. Somebody talking about you is not your real enemy. A real enemy is one who's going to wait until your most vulnerable moment after you have been hit, hurt, and harmed and will add the proverbial insult to to injury, not to make the message personal, but I cannot help but thinking about earlier this year when I was in recovery from surgery and my beautiful wife took some days off that she had earned to help nurse me back to health. And because she was not coming to the job that she was running, her boss decided decided to, to let her go. You see, that's a real enemy. The boss who did the firing and the spiritual forces that had been stacked against us to try to attack both my health and our finances. See, real enemies manifest 
themselves in different ways. Like when you watch a man die while pleading for his life and then you subsequently try to bring awareness and attention to these and other related atrocities by simply stating black lives matter. And when the response is blue lives matter or all lives matter, my friend, that's a real enemy. The people that erect monuments and building schools and highways to the terrorist tyrants and traitors of this very nation who literally kill people in order to keep people that look like you and me enslaved that's a real enemy. A person who can categorize members of the arts to one of them driving a car into a crowd and literally killing Heather Heyer. That is a real enemy. All of these people specifically are real enemies, but you also got to catch that there is a spiritual darkness that informs and influences their actions. And these are the types of individuals who will set a line of demarcation to let you know I care nothing about you. These types of people mirror the hearts, minds, and actions of the nation of Edom. And as such, God raised up a man with a prophetic voice that was raised simply to declare destruction over these types of people. Obadiah got a word from God and prophesied against the pride that drove their nationalism. He prophesied against them exalting themselves over and above their brothers. He prophesied against their conspiracy. And catch this specifically verse number 7 to their confederacy. He prophesied and declared that God was going to bring destruction upon Edom for their against Jacob. But if you read the word with a critical eye, you will find that a turning point of the chapter occurs in verse number 15. When the prophet says, for the day of the Lord is near upon all heathens as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy head. That word heathen used here in Hebrew is the exact same word as nations. In fact, other translations of this text specifically use the word nations here. And the turning point, if you caught it, is God says, just like I'm bringing and did indeed to bring destruction upon Edom for their acts against Jacob, every pride-filled enemy of my people from any and all nations will be destroyed. It's not just a prophecy that God gives Edom, but he tells the prophet, let Edom be an example of what's about to happen to anybody and everybody who characterizes themselves with the same type of dark, pride-filled behavior. Everybody is going to have to reap the return of your reward on your own head. That means if you're an enemy of God, then God is going to bring destruction if you're an enemy of mine. And since I'm a yeah. child of God, God is going to bring destruction. The Bible says there will be a return of thy reward upon thy own head, meaning that you're going to send out some strife. But guess what strife? It's going to be returned to, return to sender. You're going to send out bad news. But guess what bad news? It's going to be returned to, return to sender. Thank you, overseer. Andre Jones, the decline is going to receive its very own decline. The cancer that was supposed to kill you is about to be killed by the judgment of God. The poverty that's supposed to break you is about to be broken because of 
the judgment of God. The disease that's supposed to make you sick. The disease is going to get a sickness and leave you alone. The problem that's supposed to bring you down is literally going to bring you up. Everything, every enemy, every foe, every problem that has come up against you is going to have to deal with you. But not just you and you alone. But there's a greater that lives within you than he that's in the world. And it's going to have to deal with you and your big Jesus, uh, you uh, and great God, uh, great God Almighty, uh, God says uh, there's going to be a return uh, of that reward. Uh, the problems uh, will have problems. Uh, the ops uh, will run into ops. Uh, foes uh, will have foes. Uh, the enemies uh, will find enemies. Uh, and if that's uh, enough to make you skip and dance in your house. The Bible says that all of this is going to take place and God is going to show himself more mighty than you could have ever thought. And the Bible says that he's not just going to be the one who brings salvation. But as Obadiah closes out his text, destruction that's supposed to hit your house. You don't gotta find a new savior. God's gonna make you a savior like him. There's a sickness that's about to hit your body. You're not gonna have to seek another healer. God's gonna make you a healer just like him. There's a problem that's supposed to come in your life. You Another provider, but God is going to make you a provider just like Him, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. Good evening, y'all. It's time to go eat, but all I know that if the kingdom is God's and I am His, that means the kingdom, the kingdom is mine. If the glory is God's. is mine. If the Father is God's and I am His, that means that the favor is mine. So that means that everything that the enemy meant for my evil is going back to the sender. But that means that everything that God meant for my good is going back to God. And I give it back to him. He gives me favor. And I give it back to him. He gives me praise. And I give it back to him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God.
separate soul of the cup that arises in judgment. You shall. You shall condemn. Edom had to pay for their treachery against Jacob. God says, not only am I going to reward Jacob and Joseph, but I'm going to cause them to use Esau as smuggle and kidney. The very thing, the very enemy, the very problem, You're in the, the book, very sir. circumstance, the very sickness that was designed to very destroy you. <clears throat> God says you're going to use that mm -hmm. to prosper you. You're going to use that to propel you. You're going to use that to be judgment upon their heads. Because I've chosen Jacob. Because I've chosen Israel to be my faithful one. <clears throat> and just like it happened for Edom, God says all of the heathen shall experience a similar fate mm. because I'm going to have you judging the nations like me. You don't have to worry about the state that you're in. The potter is going to put you back together again. You don't have to worry about what they said. You don't have to worry about what they did. You don't have to worry about the pain that was caused. There will be a day of recompense. There will be a day of restoration. There will be a day of revival. Some of us, the greatest betrayals in our lives are from the people that were the closest to us. And God says, you don't worry about that. You don't worry about the people. Because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Uh -huh. Weapons of our warfare are not. They are mighty, mighty to God, to the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity everything to the obedience of Christ. I want you to hear me as we conclude. The abuse was supposed to injure you in the mind. The struggle was supposed to injure you in your psyche and your spirit. The betrayal was supposed to damage your faith. But God says we have the power to cast those things down. And bring every thought under the submission of who Jesus is. Who was Jesus? He was able to take the pain that the enemies inflicted upon him and rise with all power in his hand. That's the testimony of the saints. That no matter what you do, we are able to rise above it. As I pray for you this week, my prayer is going to be for elevation. God causes you to rise above all of the problems, all of the stresses. <laughs> all of the past issues, all of the sicknesses that you're able to transcend and rise above. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. We just ask that you would release a special blessing unto them and to every household that is represented here today. Anybody connected to anybody today, that your word would come and erase all of the struggles, all of the issues that you will cause us to stand strong in faith, stand strong in truth, stand strong in power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We want to thank you for how you have been supporting us. Please continue to do so. If you are a cash app person, cash symbol, refuge, C-O-G-I-C. If you want to text to give, the number is 77977. 77977. The keyword is Refuge Chesapeake. And if you do that, you follow the prompts and you'll be able to give right from where you are. 
We're going to continue to pray for you. Please do the same for us. That God's speed will be done in your hearts, minds, and lives. Amen. We'll see you next time. Thank you.